Action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Tough, good. Don't forget, don't, don't take off much of the top. Yeah, you just finish it on the bottom. Whatever happens, just do my favorite game. <laughs> yes, reps. Your normal thing. Normal fade. Um, not too much at the top. Um, skin, skin fade. And just make me look pro uh, appropriate, man. <laughs> okay, bro. I got you, man. <laughs> fight. So, Chef, what part you learned to do this thing here, man? Well, actually, I started, you know, my elder brother. He's the one that teach me this. From a very young age, uh, I think it was around 11, 12, I started cutting with just the comb and the scissors. And from there, he actually gave me mushy one day to cut his hair. And it, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I actually messed it up. That's what the, that's what the machine? Yeah. You gotta get your comb and scissors here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a pro now. So you enjoy it? Yeah, I enjoy it a lot. As you guys know that I'm always willing to clean you guys up whenever, anytime on tour. Who's the most difficult person to cut here? Actually, it's Oshin Thomas. Oshin? Yes, he says he's always in his phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you move around or just, you know? Every time you need to tell him to lift his head, lift his head. Oh. He, his head is always dumb. And like who here, who, who here does give you like the most trouble in terms of give, giving them the style they want? Um, actually it's Evan Lewis. He's a pretty skeptical guy with his haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Louis. Yeah. One time I cut it like um, about six something in the evening mm -hmm. and about eight o'clock, he messaged me. He needs something changed. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to give him a next year cut that two times in one day. I got the easiest person to cut then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty simple, man. <laughs> Pretty simple cut, man. Skin fade. Yeah. Get it fade in and finish. So how many heads you mess up in your life? Well, a lot. <laughs> I start, you know, a lot of patches, uneven cut. So. You ever mess up when you fellas here on tour? Well, I would say the Evan. Nah. <laughs> nah. At the time when I started cutting on tour, you know, it, it my was the first person here that I started cutting. That, yeah. That was back. That was in the 19. Oh, 19. Okay. And the 19 yeah, yeah, yeah. cricket. So you were the first person here to start cutting on tour, but uh, never mess him up. Over the years, I've seen some very interesting hair stories. Sunil and the rain definitely comes to me. There have been quite a few more hawks, to be honest. Sunil, Russell, Fabian at one stage, Nikita Miller. I've played cricket with somebody like Sunaman Jamal Ben, who is, you know, had many different styles. He's had hair flat, he's had his hair cut low, he's had it dyed. And dyeing seems to be a pretty popular thing in the Caribbean, you know? You got Russell, Hetty, Fabian, you name it, these guys have dyed it, man. Oh, Simona here as well. The blonde thing seems to be pretty much in style, man. Shep, you got dyed? No, no, right now I'm rocking some gray, he gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, so I'm permanent. <laughs> I ain't thinking about, I ain't thinking about going blonde on these days. Okay, you gotta get some blonde streaks and nose piercing. <laughs> Sheppy, when, when, we, when we first come into contact, man, was the first time you met up? Regional cricket? Regional cricket, yeah. yeah. Barbados was a four day game. Actually, that was my. Um, Your debut? Yeah, no, my second four day game. Uh oh. No, actually, third. Third. Third four day game. At the Oval? Yeah, at the Oval. I think that was the game when came back after injury. Yeah, and you guys. Hemrod score 100. Hemrod score 100. Right, 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 right. She scored a double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my first impression, Sheffy. I actually thought Sheppy was way older. Not any gray hairs, but I mean, just his stature, man. Like, I, I'm a pretty big fella as well, too, but most people guess would believe that I'm old as well. Well, outside of the baby face, the baby face. <laughs> but, nah, I thought Sheppy was way older. That was my first impression of Sheppy. I don't know what Sheppy's first impression of me was. Well, actually, you look way short on TV. <laughs> <laughs> when I stand next to you, then I notice that. Uh, even though I'm 6 three. So Shabby, was your fondest memory in the West Indies shirt? Like, what's the most memorable experience you had so far playing for West Indies? Well, you know, 
few moments could go past, you know, going out there, walking out there the first time. Yeah. So yeah. Actually, my you made your debut there. My debut in um, India against Afghanistan. All right. That was pretty fun for me. In you Lucknow. Know. Yeah, Lucknow. Yeah, legendary Lucknow. <laughs> <laughs> how was yeah. that? It was good. You know, um, when I was asked, you know, how to open the board, and I was pretty surprised. So that was a uh, fun moment for me there. I played that game? Yeah. You actually won 10 over for 18 or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, my memory is very bad when it comes to cricket. He hit it well enough. Brilliant. That is outstanding. That is top class. Romario Shepard stuck up the mitt and found it sticking there. Sheppy, I tell you what, that catch you took off my bowling. I was actually turning to go back to my mark because I thought you misjudged the ball, you know. Well, and actually, actually, I did. I did miss. <laughs> well, it was a good recovery. What? Yeah. I don't know if you see my face on TV, but I was so shocked to see you catch that ball. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was happy though. I was yeah. very happy, man. But that Actually, top catch. I think I had to run in, but then I realized that it was oh, coming. <laughs> oh, it was reaching. It yeah. was going over. And then, you know, as you see. So you were surprised too? Or you, you, you no, always... I wasn't really surprised at okay. taking the catch. I was just pretty. Um, <laughs> my heart was racing a bit when I ran in <laughs> at first. <laughs> So once I, once I feel it in my hands, I was okay with it. Uh, yeah. Who you would say you pick up most of your, um, or model your game off of, in terms of, I guess, past Guyanese players or past West Indian players? Who you look up to the most and probably would have modeled your game off? Well, for me, you know, uh, I had this conversation before, you know, Dwayne Bravo is someone that mm -hmm. I've looked up to over the years from since he made his debut. Yeah. You know, I was a little kid, you know, listening to the game on radio at the time. Mm -hmm. you know, they had no television, so it was on radio, I think. It was against England, and he made a test debut. Yeah. And from there on, you know, I started following the name, following the name, and it's okay now that I'm actually playing together with him. Yeah, no, but I said, it's been good. You know, came a long way, you know, and now I'm in the West Indies shirt. You know, playing alongside someone that I've looked up to. Yeah. You know, that's been fun for me. It's been more guy that, that I've looked up to, you know. Okay. And I follow West Indies cricket always. At practice and stuff, when you got somebody like Bravo there, like, like what kind of what kind of questions you would ask him or how you would go about? Just trying to learn from him as much as possible. Is there a case where you will approach him or he's normally a one to come to you and Well, he's someone who actually will come up to you and ask you before you start bowling at practice or anything, he will start asking you, what are you working on? Mm -hmm. And from there, you know, he will start working with you. So he's he's a he's a guy that pretty teach whoever he's bowling with at the moment and whoever is coming next, you know, he stand at the mid off here there, you know, yeah. see what ask a lot of question like what do you think? What is your next ball? Mm. Or what are you trying to do? What is your field position and stuff like that? So he's someone who you always try to get as much inf information off of you before he start feeding you information. So at training, you know, I look forward to bowling with him because you know I learn a lot of stuff from him being around because he's someone you know who tour the world a lot. So he know all the different kind of condition and what what you need, what weapon you need, and yeah. against which batsman and stuff like that. And he's a clown too, man. He like a lot of pranking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he actually had a lot of fond memories playing with him, man. And he's one of the first people who would have probably believed in me, man. Um, so we played together, obviously, in Chennai, West Indies. You know, we've, we've come a long way. Um, he's obviously one that's helped me a lot as well, too. But. A classic clown, man. I love to prank people. <laughs> Just yeah, they coming on the elevator, he's standing up, so they're trying to jump me. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, they expect you that guy, man. Uh, just the telling diary as well, too. I feel, I, I would just love to be Chris Gale's son. Like, just to, just to live with Chris. I just, just like to spend one week with Chris. I don't know if I could survive the week, but Chris got to be one of the happiest men in the world to ever live. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Who does ask for here cut the most on toilet? Like, who's come to you most often? It's a good one. <laughs> because it's really spread out across, mm. you know. 
Uh, well, Russell, Russell started, you know, back in St. Lucia, you know, the first time I got his ear, you know, because he asked if I'm capable. <laughs> So he didn't believe until he saw me cut at my ear, you know, after the first T20 against um, Australia. Mm -hmm. Then he actually said, he asked if he would cut his ear. So when he told him it was me, then he actually said, well, he can actually cut my ear now because, you know, he sees the capability of what I'm capable of. You know, the funny thing is, at my, at my was my first wicket in cricket. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I started out as a batsman. You know, I used to bat at first, and the first time I picked up the ball and said, well, mm -hmm. I'm going to bowl was against his school mm -hmm. in a 20 over competition. And the first ball that I bowled got him LBW. So <laughs> I always remind him that that's my your first wicket is your a fish. Test, is a test batsman. <laughs> boy. My first first class game was against Guyana, boy. Yeah? Yeah, really? Providence. Then my first class debut at 17. Wow, that's pretty really young. First, first class wicket, Shinarain Chattagoon. And at that time, he was a test batsman, I think. I think he, would, he had just got dropped from the test team, but he was in and around the test team. It was a memorable game, man. Chattagoon scored 100 in the second innings. Royston Crandon scored 100 in the first innings. Wow. Kevin Stout scored 180 something. And then Ryan Hines scored 109 games. Four hundreds in one game. That was, that was a memorable yeah. day. Day. That was a rough one too, boy. <laughs> that <of> runs. <laughs> rough. And where was that? That was at Providence. Oh, then the following year, the following year came back and we went to Burbies. We played at Albion. And Ship, 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 Ship scored like 70 something in that game. But I didn't play that game, it was 12 man. That's how I get in the fruits. <laughs> I was in the dressing room and, you know, every, every morning you get the fruit platter. So every, like they were trying to give me a nickname when they, because they first came in the team, but couldn't find a nickname to give me. But I would just stand up next to your fruit platter and be talking and, and just eating. That was the nickname they called, they called them fruits. <laughs> and I never thought it would have stopped. But to this day, everybody called me fruits too. Oh. <laughs> and you got a lot of balash of fruit too. <laughs> <laughs> See inside of this shape. Yeah, yeah, just cut off all that. <laughs> just keep my little bob. So what was it like bowling to Shiv Chandrapal? Man, Shiv is one of the hardest people I've ever bowled at, man. Like, <laughs> and it's just because Shiv, you will feel as though you're going to beat Shiv, but Shiv is just tucky about me inside. So you feel as though you're going to beat the outside edge and it's tucky about me inside. When I first met Shiv, boy, Shiv, born like Shiv in Nets, one thing you got, you have to learn is patience, man. Yeah. Man, Shiv is just wear it down, wear it down, wear it down. Funny enough, I got Shiv in the game, man. And uh, I think it was a T20 game. And they caught Shiv. And you know, the youngster kind of, you ain't really want get, to get anybody like caught in cover or deep spray. Yeah, yeah. Like, you want to nick them off or bowl them down or anything like that. <laughs> I ain't nick off Shiv, man. One thing is always try to is, like, get all the big players out. Finish? Yeah. Go to man. What? Oh, no. Then you look at it. Alright, are you good? No, you can, you can have a look at it. Thank you for your back,